and welcome to my first real-time process video of on how I approach watercolor landscapes. This idea was pitched to me a month ago by Billy, who lives in Glendale, uh, Arizona. And they said they liked my Sedona watercolors and asked if I could do any real-time videos featuring how my process works. And so to answer your question, yes, here we are. I'm going to take that suggestion and apply it in this video. So down here, I have some phthalo blue to start with the sky. And if you've seen a few of my other videos, you know I do like to start with the sky. It's usually the biggest section of my paintings. And I like to get the biggest section done first because then, you know, I kind of, oh, I sigh because I don't have to worry as much that, you know, at least at this point, when I finish the sky, it will be a, a, at least a third of the painting finished and complete. And then the rest of it will be less stressful because, you know, I already have a huge chunk of it done. I took some time to get to it, but here it is. Uh, I don't have any reference photos of my own of Sedona, but I do have plenty of the Superstition Mountains in Apache Junction. So that's what I'll tackle today. And that's what's here is the soups. So the photo I reference I used, I actually happened to be taking a trip to the local Renaissance Festival, but on the 60 highway to go to the event, I looked on the left and I saw all that snow just completely covering it. It was absolutely amazing. And this was last winter in 2019. We had a huge, massive snow dump in the Arizona Valley. Just if you look everywhere on the outskirts of the city, there was just tons of snow. If you just drove 20 minutes north or any other direction towards where it was just slightly higher elevation than the valley, there was snow. The Four Peaks was covered, everything was covered. It was not a typical sight at all. So when I saw that on the 60 Highway going to the Renaissance Festival, I knew I had to make a detour. And yeah, I wasn't the only one who thought that. There was tons of locals who were just lined up in their cars going to the superstitions to see the mountain just these tops just covered in snow and it was beautiful to see. Um, anyone who lives in the north probably wouldn't get that, but here in Arizona, it's always hot. It's over a hundred for half the year. So seeing snow is, is not typical. Now the painting is progressing a bit here. So there's a whole bunch of things that I do with clouds. It's rather simple. Uh, you have the main sky color, which typically in Arizona looks a lot like a phthalo blue, so that's what I used. And then you go with a wash of just water, and once that water is laid down, you leave bits and pieces of the paper dry in between the sky and where the cloud is, just to have that clean edge. And also some parts where there's not a clean edge, so you can get a tiny bit of that fuzzy bleeding effect. And then on the underside of those clouds, you put more of a, a ultramarine blue and a alizarin crimson to have a more of a purpley kind of darker color of the underside of the, of the cloud. And that's what I'm doing here. I visited this mountain many times with my friends and family, usually seeing them from the perspective of the Goldfield Ghost Town, which is a real town that popped up when Arizona was just a U.S. territory because there was a discovery of gold. So there was an influx of prospectors in search of riches in the area by 1893, that same year. In its heyday, the town reached a population of 4,000 people with a center complete with a post office, general store, saloon, school, a church. And there's plenty of people wanting to see if they could strike it rich, but then it became regulated pretty quick. So there was less people who could steal the gold if they worked with the actual mining group. Less than five years, uh, in 1897, the gold vein dried up and the grade of ore dropped considerably. So the miners left, the population went elsewhere to find work, and the Goldfield town itself became just another ghost town in the Old West.
now this part of the painting, you can see when I get to the horizon line, uh, I added some kind of like a, a warmer tone to it. I did that with a burnt umber to give it more of a dusty look, kind of a look towards the horizon line because Arizona always has dust in the air. I mean, there's hardly ever any rain to keep the dust down. So to give it that atmospheric perspective with the beautiful purple colors and the phthalo blues, um, you kind of mute it a little bit with that burnt umber to give it that dusty kind of look. So atmospheric perspective, the further away in the horizon line you go, the more dust and therefore the more burnt umber and a very light amount though, not too much. Yeah, for Goldfield though, in the 1910s and 20s, there was some interested parties to try to start up mining again, but it didn't last. Today, the town survives more of a uh, local historic attraction um, with a little train and a saloon and a hamburger joint. And the hamburgers in the saloon are actually really good. I usually get the one with the mushrooms and uh, jalapenos. Gotta get that spice. You know, Southwestern spice is always good. <laughs> 